Hello, this is Patricia from patriciafenty.com and today I have a crochet tutorial for this really pretty fall cowl pattern and the yarn that I'm using really makes this such a beautiful cowl. You can wear it in a few different ways but it is a more advanced project so I do recommend that you have some crochet experience to do this tutorial. Now for this project, I'm using the Red Heart Unforgettable Yarn in the color is Polo. It's 100% acrylic yarn and it's a three and a half ounce size ball or 100 grams and 270 yards or 246 meters. And they're calling this a number four medium weight yarn. It It is an interesting yarn in that the the dimension of the yarn does change. You get some bulkier pieces, but for the most part, it's kind of a fine yarn. And so they're recommending a six millimeter or J10 crochet hook. I'm using smaller crochet hooks. We're going to be use a five millimeter or an H8, and we'll use a four millimeter or a G6 crochet hook for the, for the body. And the reason for that is I want this to be a tighter stitch. They're using this for a more lacy type of pattern. But of course you can use any yarn that you like, but I would choose a finer number four if you can. And of course a variegated or self-striping yarn makes for a nice pattern repeat. And then you'll just need a darning needle and some scissors. Now before we begin, I do have a little tip with this yarn. This yarn does have a bit of a furry texture and I did do a yarn review on this. So I'll put a link to that below. And one of the issues you can run into with this is that it tangles very easy, especially if you have to unravel your work and especially when you're pulling the yarn out of the center of the ball. So for this yarn, I do recommend pulling your yarn from the outside of the ball. So the measurement of the cowl is eight inches or 20 and a half centimeters wide by 37 inches or 94 centimeters long. Now I'm actually not going to show you how to crochet the pattern with this yarn because there's so much dark yarn in here and it's hard to see the actual stitches. So I'm just going to use this yarn here. And this is just a number four medium weight yarn and it's a little bit thicker than the yarn that we're using. Now, if you're new to crochet, this is a more advanced pattern. So I don't really recommend it if you are new to crochet. I do have a beginner crochet series that shows you all the stitches you need to know for this pattern. I will not be showing those stitches. I will just be showing the actual pattern. So you're going to start with a slip knot and you'll start with a five millimeter crochet hook and you will begin with a foundation chain of 37 stitches. So just create that foundation chain of 37 stitches and I'll see you at the end. Welcome back. So I have my chain of 37 stitches and if you're using this yarn here, your foundation chain should be eight inches in length. But because this is a heavier weight yarn, this one is actually 10 inches in length. So you do want your, your cowl to be eight inches. So if you're using a heavier yarn, then you can adjust the pattern repeat. So the repeat is four stitches plus one, but the, that must be in a multiple uh, odd numbers. So this is four times nine is 36 plus one. So you could do four times seven, which would be 28 plus one. If you're using a heavier yarn or if you're using an even finer yarn, you could do four times 11 plus one. So make sure it's in an odd number of multiples. And so I have my 37 chains and now you'll do a chain one for a turning chain. And we're going to work back for row one with a row of single crochet. And you're going to work those single crochets into the back loop of your chain. So chains have three stitches. So there's your top V stitch and this back bump. And we're going to work into that back bump. So this is your turning chain, so skip that. So work into the back bump of the next stitch with a single crochet. 
and then do a single crochet into the back bump of the next stitch and work your way all the way back doing a single crochet into the back bump of each stitch and I'll see you at the end of this row. Now coming to the end of this row you, there's this one stitch left making sure to pick up that last stitch of the beginning chain one and you'll now have 37 single crochets for row one. Now we're going to change the hook size. Now I just do this to make sure that you have a nice loose foundation row because it can be easy to make this too tight and then the bottom of the cowl might be too narrow. If you're comfortable with your tension then you'd want to do this in a very loose stitch to begin with. So using the five millimeter crochet hook we're now going down to the four millimeter crochet hook and for row two we'll chain four and turn your work or you can turn your work and chain four. It's totally up to you. And now you'll work a double crochet into the single crochet, uh, not the chain row, but into that single crochet, you'll work a double crochet. And then chain one and skip two stitches into the third stitch going under both loops, you'll work a single crochet and chain one and then skip two stitches and then into the third stitch we're going to work a cluster. So you'll do a double crochet into that third stitch going under both loops, chain one, work a treble crochet into that same stitch and chain one and a double crochet into that same stitch to create a cluster and then chain one. And again, if you're new to crochet, I do teach all these stitches in the beginner crochet series. And if you're feeling brave, you can certainly take this project on. The only thing that's challenging about it, about it, it's a four row repeat, and it might be a little bit hard to keep track of that, but you can just watch uh, the video through again. So chain one, skip two stitches, and into the third stitch, you'll do a single crochet, and then chain one skip two stitches and work another cluster. So a double crochet into that third stitch, chain one, a treble crochet into that same stitch, chain one, and a double crochet into that same stitch, and chain one, and that completes that cluster. And then you'll skip two stitches and do a single crochet into the third stitch. And you'll just repeat this pattern all the way along. All right, so coming to the end of row two, I've just done my single crochet chain one, and you should have three stitches left at the end of your row. And we'll work a half a cluster into the very last stitch. So do a double crochet into the very last stitch of this row. And Rather than doing a chain one, we're just going to go right into the treble here. So yarn over twice and work a treble into that same stitch. And we're just doing this at the end of each row because we want to keep the clusters a little bit snug at the end of each row so that the finish of the outside edge is nice and snug. So that's the end of row two and what you should have then is a half a cluster on each end and five full clusters in the middle. So now we're going into row three and this is actually the beginning of your pattern repeat. So this is row one of your pattern repeat. So chain one and turn your work. And then you'll work a single crochet into the top of that treble crochet and chain one. And then you have this single crochet here and you're going to work a treble crochet into the top of that single crochet. And you're always working, working under both loops of the stitches for this entire pattern. So work your treble crochet, chain one, 
And now you're going to work a double crochet into the base of this treble crochet. And at the very base, there's two loops on the side of the treble. And you're going to work under both those stitches and work the double crochet into that. And then chain one. And that creates a V stitch. And then you go over to your cluster and going into the top of your treble crochet, going under both loops, you'll work a single crochet. And then chain one. And then you're going to work that same V stitch into this single crochet here. So do a treble crochet into the top of that single crochet. And chain one and then a double crochet into the base of the treble crochet going under those two loops on the side and work your double crochet and a chain one and then go over to your cluster and work a single crochet into the top of the treble of that cluster and then chain one so just repeat that pattern all the way along all right, so coming to the end of row three, you'll have six V stitches. And I just finished my last V stitch. I'll do a chain one, and then you'll do a single crochet into the third chain of that chain four from the previous row. Might be a little bit hard to find, but do a single crochet into that last stitch. And that is the end of row three. So for row four, you'll chain one and turn your work. And this is the second row of your pattern repeat. So you'll do a single crochet into the top of that single crochet, chain one, and now you're going to work that cluster into this V stitch. So going into that chain one space of the V stitch, you're going to work a double crochet, chain one, do a treble crochet into that same V stitch, and chain one, and work a double crochet into that same space, and then chain one. Then you'll have that single crochet You'll come down into that with a single crochet and then a chain one and then you'll work a cluster into the next V stitch space. So a double crochet, chain one, a treble crochet, chain one and a double crochet all into the same V stitch space and chain one and come down into your single crochet with a single crochet and a chain one. So you'll just repeat that all the way along. Now coming to the end of row four, you'll have six full clusters for row four. And so I've just finished my last cluster with a chain one and then coming down into the very last stitch of this row, you're catching that very outside stitch with a single crochet. And that's the end, the second row repeat and row four. For row five, you'll chain four and turn your work or turn your work and chain four. And this is row three of your pattern repeat. And you'll do a double crochet into the top of that single crochet. And then chain one. And then you'll work a single crochet into the top of that treble crochet of this cluster. And then chain one. And now you're going to work back that V stitch, that same V stitch into the top of the single crochet. So do a treble crochet into the single crochet and chain one and a double crochet into the base of that treble crochet going into those side two stitches and chain one. 
and then a single crochet into the top of the treble of the next cluster with a chain one and you'll a V stitch down into the single crochet and you'll repeat that all the way long. Okay, so coming to the end of row five, I've done my single crochet into the top of the treble crochet, chain one, and we'll finish this by doing a treble crochet into the top of that single crochet from the previous row. And instead of doing a chain one, we're just going to do a double crochet right into the bottom of that treble. And again, that's just to keep these side stitches, the end stitches a little snug. So that's the end of row five. And you'll have five full V stitches and these short little V stitches at the end. So then you'll chain four and turn your work and now we're going into row six which is row four and the last row of your pattern repeat so now you'll work a double crochet into the top of that double crochet there and chain one and then you'll work a single crochet into the top of that single crochet chain one and then you'll work your cluster into this V stitch here. So double crochet, chain one, a treble crochet, chain one, and a double crochet, oops, and a chain one. And then you work your single crochet down into the single crochet, a chain one, and you'll work that pattern all the way along to the end of this row. Now coming to the end of row six, I've just done my single crochet in the top of that treble crochet with a chain one, and we'll finish this row by doing a double crochet into the third chain of that chain four from the previous row, and do a double crochet, and rather than doing a chain one, you're just going to work a treble crochet into that same stitch. And just like that. And that is the end of row six and the end of the pattern repeat. So from here on in, you're just going to repeat rows three through six and that will be for rows seven to 66. Now, if you have some stitch markers, it can be helpful to put a stitch marker at the end of your row for repeat to help keep track of your rows because these rows are offset, but they're very similar. So it can be a bit confusing as you're crocheting along which row you're actually at, which pattern repeat you're at. So again, you're going to repeat rows three through six, which is 16, 16 pattern repeats, which will give you a total of 66 rows in total. So I'll just get you started here again on your your row three of your pattern repeat. So chain one and you'll probably have to go back and go back to the 920 for the beginning of row three and watch the pattern uh, repeat a few times until you get used to it. So repeating row three, you'll do a single crochet into the top of that treble crochet, chain one, and then you'll work a treble crochet into that single crochet. And I'm doing this row of V stitches, chain one, and work your double crochet into the base of that treble crochet into those two side loops and do your double crochet, chain one, and work your single crochet into the top of the treble crochet and chain one. So carry on. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do this four row repeat one more time and I'll come back and show you how to finish the very last row of the cowl. Welcome back. Now imagine that you're coming to the end of row 66 and you have done your 16 pattern repeats of your four row pattern repeat. 
So I've just done my last cluster and I have a single crochet in the top of the treble with a chain one. And for this very last stitch, we're going to do it just a little bit differently. So work your double crochet into the third chain of the chain four from the previous row. And rather than doing a treble crochet, you're just going to work another double crochet just for this very, very last stitch. And that is the end of the pattern for the cowl. So now what we're going to do is do a row of single crochet along this scallop edge for row 67. We'll chain one and turn your work. And now you will skip this first stitch here. That's the double crochet. So going into the next double crochet, you'll do a single crochet and then do a single crochet into the chain one space and then a single crochet into the single crochet and then a single crochet into the chain one space and then a single crochet into the top of that double crochet and a single crochet into the chain one space. So essentially you're working a single crochet into the top of each stitch and into each chain one space. So go ahead and work that all the way along and I'll see you at the end. All right, so here we are coming to the end of this final row, row 67. I've done my single crochet in the single crochet and then doing one into the chain one and then you'll do a single crochet into the top of this double crochet and then a single crochet into the fourth chain from the previous row not the third one but the fourth one this was a bit hard to get into and so just work that single crochet into that last stitch and then you'll do a chain one to fasten off and then you'll cut your tail end. Now I'm not going to cut this because I'm going to unravel this and um, so you'll just fasten off, darn in your tail end, darn in your beginning end and then from here on in I'll go back to the regular cowl and show you how to place the buttons. Welcome back. So I've darned in my tail ends and you can see what a lovely scalloped finish that creates at this side of the cowl. And if you're wondering which is the right side, it really is a reversible cowl, but if there were to be a right side, it would be this side here where you just finished your single crochet with the loops on the top. So you can see how beautifully this pattern crocheted up. I'm sorry about the color. I'm having problems with the lighting here. It's actually not showing how pretty this yarn really is. So in order to place your buttons, what you want to do is you want to use a button that is no more than an inch and a half or four centimeters in diameter. You could go down to an inch and a quarter or three and a half centimeters in diameter. You don't want anything bigger than that because you're using these loops here for buttonholes and you want to place the button. This is your beginning edge here. So you're going to come up six inches or 15 centimeters from the bottom and then come in an inch and a half or four centimeters from the side. And that's where you will place the one button. So you can use this cowl with just one button. And if you wanna use two buttons, you could place another button here and you could even use a third button here. And this is the edge you wanna put your buttons on. When you attach your button, you wanna make sure that you're sewing into a cluster and not into a space. Then what I do when I'm putting buttons onto crocheted work, I, I don't create a knot. I just have two tail ends, sew the button on, then I tie a square knot and then I darn in my tail ends. So that's how I like to put buttons on a cowl. If you don't want to do a button, you could use a shawl pin and this would work really nice. And you could just place the shawl pin wherever you like on the cowl. So that would be really great to use as well. 
Also, once you're done, there will be approximately 60 yards or 55 meters left. And there's enough yarn here to do a little ear warmer headband project. And I have a tutorial for this. I'll put a link for that below. And I use that with leftover yarn from a couple of different projects. So this is a great idea to use leftover yarn. So next, I'm going to show you a couple of different ways that you can wear this cowl. Welcome back. Now I forgot to mention about blocking your project and what you want to do to block this is to just either uh, wash it by hand in cold water and lay it flat to dry and just sort of you know shaping it when you lay it flat or you can use a hand steamer and that's what I did I just used a hand steamer now this is an acrylic yarn and in theory you could just put this in the machine but it's kind of a delicate yarn with the ply the ply is kind of fluffy so I think washing it by hand would help just keep the integrity of the fabric now the most common way to wear uh, a cowl is to have your button up on your shoulder here so in this case you'd have your button up on your left shoulder and this is your your straight edge here and then just bring your scallop edge up and pick any one of these openings that you like near the top and you can button it up just like that and then the collar is rolled over here so that it lays nice around the neck if you were wanting to use more buttons your buttons would be on this flat edge here and you could either have a second button down here or and or a third button there in which case you would just button it up like that then the other way you could wear this would be just to uh, drape it and and bring the button down further on your chest and just just adjust it like that and just wear it a little bit lower like like that now the other way you can wear this is it's kind of like I'd almost call it like a scarfette so you can undo it and bring your button over to the other side to the right side of your body and you just roll the collar over and so you're basically just wearing it straight across and for me the way my pattern and the color works out it actually matches that perfectly yours might not do this but it would be nice if it did and so you just roll your collar again and then line it up here I guess it'd be about there and just button it up picking any one of those those buttonholes and there you go it's not really showing the bottom very much but uh, but yeah and then what is nice about this is that the collar is a little bit high so it's it's uh, nice and warm and it's covering your chest so I think that's a lovely way to wear this this cowl so I hope you enjoyed this tutorial please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my youtube channel for more creative and inspiring videos thank you for joining me